the uh, the rear of the car was getting all loosey goosey in the last <laughs> sector there. <laughs> Mark Webber in rather mischievous mood there. What do you think he's going to be like as a teammate, Sebastian? He will be definitely difficult to understand, and uh, hopefully, I hope that at the end of next year, I won't be walking through the paddock and say, "No problem, mate. Thanks, mate." <laughs> So make sure, make sure you don't take your knife, your wife, with you. I get rusty. That's all right. It's an Aussie accent. You know when you know Crocodile Dundee yeah. when you say that's, 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 that's not, not a knife. knife. That's a knife. You know? <laughs> that's a knife. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sure if you ask Sir Jackie, uh, he will tell you that you know. <laughs> Is that you pretending to be Scottish? Back in the day, um, pole position was was equally important. But, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. If Kimmy was here, what kind of things might he say to the audience? Well, I think he would be very happy because, uh, you know, he always likes to... <laughs> <laughs> I see I can't do it. I'm starting to... <laughs> Fernando made it pretty clear. He said you have to leave it the space. All the time you have to leave it the space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was clear, though. <laughs> Thousand euros, but you did on the turkey, it's not good because it was good for the tour, but it was not good for the tour. Perfect. Thank you. I would say ding 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 I was going to say one of my favourite accents is northern. German. I think northern is, uh, is quite nice. All oh, right, it's rough. Do you, well, what? A bit rough, no? Oh, well, that's that's a northern accent. Exactly. Do you, can you even do accents? <laughs> that's a not, yes, isn't it? That was just a yes. Not, not that I knew of. <laughs> <laughs> can you do Birmingham? Ad actually, Adrian brought me close to that Brummy accent because he told some stories. Uh, about Nigel Mansell in the past, about the chicane in Monza where he was, I don't know, 10 or 20 kph quicker than Piquet at that time, and Piquet didn't understand, and then Pat Patrick Head went to Nigel, Adrian ob obviously was there, asking what he's doing, and he said, I just, I just, uh, take my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I just was. I, I, I just tied my knuckles around the wheel and just go straight. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> back to my room, uh, got changed, and uh, when I was in my underpants, Helmut Marko opened the door. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought the same. And uh, <laughs> he said, oh, you f***ed that one right up. <laughs> I said, uh, what, what exactly do you mean? And he said, uh, yeah, turn five, I've seen it. You lost more than 500s. If you only copy the lap from Q2 in turn five, you will have pole. <laughs> Because <laughs> the thing is, you know, what most people don't see, obviously this year has been a, a tricky year in some, uh, well, you know, and uh, <laughs> people always think that, you know, Helmut and me, we're like, you know, best mates and uh, actually the example that I'm just giving, giving you uh, proves pretty much the opposite. I think he was never shy of giving me <laughs> and probably never will be. <laughs> so he came to my room, gave me a massive, uh, yeah, uh, bollocking for it up and not getting pole position. <laughs> and I said to him, Helmut, yeah, turn five, you got a point. Obviously, he spoke to the engineers and uh, he was uh, yeah, well informed. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an awful lap. And uh, yeah, still, you should have got pole. Next day, um, yeah, we finished third, which I think was a good recovery for the race we had, getting stuck uh, in traffic and so on. Anyways, uh, so you see, yesterday you get pole, you win the race. You didn't get pole, you it up and today you saw it, you had a race. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the summary. Yes. So uh... <laughs>